Hello and welcome to this ICME Global Awards webinar. My name is Matt Stalker and I'm your host for today's presentation. The ICME Global Awards celebrate chemical, process and biochemical engineering excellence and are widely recognised as the world's most prestigious chemical engineering awards. Today we'll be announcing the winner of the ICME 2020 Biochemical Engineering Award, sponsored by WSP. This award recognises the best project, process or product to demonstrate excellence in the application of biochemical engineering. And joining us now is WSP UK Head of Industry, Claire Gott. Good morning, everybody. I'll just share my slides. Let me know when you can see my screen. Okay, we can see your screen, but not the PowerPoint yet. No problem. And I'll just change the display. Okay, everybody should be able to see that now. Yes, yeah. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, I'll just move on to the next slide. We've already found out who I am. So in, in terms of the award today, I just wanted to give a very quick overview of WSP's interpretation and why it's so important. Um, and for us, biochemical engineering is a rapidly developing sector which takes exciting science discoveries and changes them into cost-effective and environmentally friendly processes. Our biochemical engineers use these processes to create products ranging from new medicines through to renewable energy, as well as greener solutions to waste treatment. Biochemical engineers are responsible for tackling many of today's global challenges, such as the development of vaccines to protect people against pandemic flu, stem cell therapies to cure blindness, and biofuels from algae to provide more sustainable energy sources. At WSP, we've actually been supporting pharmaceutical and biotechnology clients across the globe for decades. And as my role as UK Head of Industry, I'm delighted that our WSP Global Centre of Excellence for Process Engineering is here in the UK. But we also work very closely with our colleagues and experts across the globe, and in particular, our chemical engineers in Europe and our high containment team in the States. With over 40,000 people globally and 7,000 in the UK, we are able to support our clients throughout the entire life cycle of a project. So from concept through to operation and on to decommission. We collaborate as multidiscipline delivery teams with our utilities teams, highways engineers, environmental colleagues, as well as our structures and building services departments. And you can see that we've worked with the likes of Thermo Fisher, DEFRA and Ipsen across different stages of the life cycle to support their particular needs. So what opportunities can we see from biochemical engineering? There are many new applications that this opens up, um, some of those around food production, for example. We're seeing challenges as our population increases as issues with land, water and energy usage continue and also resource efficiency and waste. So there are opportunities that really fall to us um, and biochemical engineers to, to work on. <clears throat> May that be new, new sources of food protein, production, production of micro protein foods, novel food production to address the land and water energy use, for example, <clears throat> vertical farms, reducing land usage and efficient use of resources, biochemical engineers developing nutrients for plants <clears throat> and microclimates, for example. There's also alternative sustainable packaging materials for food production itself. For example, wood-based fibres um, from wood pulp, for reusable food bags, um, compostable food bags, for example. <clears throat> Another area in particular, especially where WSP has experience, is pharmaceuticals. 
And we're seeing uh, right now with the live <clears throat> pandemic that we have obviously a challenge around manufacturing capacity. Um, we have issues around future proofing the production um, and also targeting medicines for specific patients and their needs. So opportunities that are arising around rapid design and build solutions that draw on biochemical engineering know-how. Designed for flexibility so that these solutions can be adapted over time to suit our changing needs. And then also cell and gene therapy that combines both biochemists and biochemical engineers who develop new solutions and processes. And lastly, in terms of energy, we all know the big challenge we face, not only here in the UK, but globally around our net zero targets. And for us as the next generation, it's important to make sure that we are considering how we provide that alternative energy. And that is in part down to biochemical engineers. We've also got low carbon processes that we're working on, supporting new process routes and development, um, for example, on fruit, food, hydrocarbon alternatives for plastics, for example, as well. And then lastly, our renewable energy sources. And at WSP, we've actually made a commitment, um, which we published recently, that moving forward, all of our projects and their designs will have half the carbon footprint by 2030. Um, and we believe that this commitment is necessary and important in achieving the targets. So lastly, um, for anybody who wants to learn more about what we're doing at WSP, please do visit our website or catch us on Twitter, um, but I'm happy to take any questions. Um, before we hand over to our amazing finalists. Okay, thank you, Claire. So we will pause for questions. If anybody's got any questions for Claire um, about the work of WSP, please type them in now into the questions box. Well, I'll give you a moment on that. Don't forget, we're live tweeting throughout all of our 2020 iChemy Global Award webinars. You can also get involved using the hashtag iChemy Awards. Okay, Claire, I don't think we have any questions, so thank you very much. We will move on. A big thank you to Claire and thank you to WSP for its sponsorship. So without further ado, here are our finalists. We have a joint entry from Al Narain University and Midland Refineries Company. Another joint entry, this one from Biocatalysts and UCL. Fujifilm Diosynth Biotechnologies. ProClean Technologies the University of Malaya, and finally, the University of Waikato. All our finalists have been invited to join us today to give a short presentation on their work, and subject to time, we'll be inviting you to participate in Q&A at the end of each presentation. You can ask your questions via the question box in the GoToWebinar portal. With that in mind, please welcome our first speaker, representing the joint entry from Al Narain University and Midland Refineries Company, it's A. Faisal Alabubi. Hello, so I hope that everyone could hear me. So everyone knows photosynthetic bioreaction that uh, converts CO2 into useful glucose. Uh, however, engineers have been working for decades on developing a reliable reactor that could work uh, as a hundred tree. And they have done it, but unfortunately, it hasn't been good enough to overcome the large operating costs which shut down many factories. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all wherever you are in the world. Greetings from Iraq, specifically from Al Nahrayn University and Midland Refineries Company. Uh, first, we would like to thank the Institution of Chemical Engineers for organizing this great event, uh, as well as thanking WSP Global for sponsoring this award. Uh, we would like to share our excitement for this very special online event. It's really great to be part of the world's most prestigious chemical and industrial engineering award. 
Um, and before moving on, we'd like to congratulate all the finalists uh, for their wonderful and outstanding achievements. So uh, let me move this screen. How could I hide it? Sorry. Okay, so the content today will be... I do apologize for this little technical issue. I don't know what's going wrong with the screen. Okay, so con the content today will be uh, the reactor design solution ideas. Uh, we'll discuss that as well as we're going to see the reactor during operation uh, with a pre-recorded video, and then we'll move to the reactor design solution results. So um, old versus new in airlift agitation. Airlift agitation has been known as the most conventional technique for low cost agitation. Uh, in gas uh, liquid bioreactors, uh, uh, at the left side, we could see here, the, the, it shows the old conventional airlift uh, agitation, which depends mostly on the friction forces. Uh, however, at the right side, um, we, we could see our idea of utilizing the whole bouncy potential in mixing the liquid. So the first uh, solution is uh, is proposing a movable sieve trays uh, that works as uh, a buffle to increase the gas path as well as working as a large puddle to increase the agitation and as we uh, call it a soft agitation with this large puddles. Uh, the next solution is proposing an air reservoirs within each tray and this air reservoir shown in the and uh, this figure reduces the power needed for agitation and also it reduces the uh, the required gas for agitation and it also increases the gas holdup uh, inside the reactor. The third solution is uh, proposing a belt conveyor uh, that works inside the reactor and this belt conveyor provides a moving structure that supports each tray uh, and, and in one single access to form the agitation uh, or the agitator equipment inside the reactor and it also transfer the energy between the, the gas filled trays and uh, to the 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 empty uh, trays uh, as well as it could be scaled up easily without hitting any engineering boundary and the fourth solution is that uh, is the the z shape reactor and this this final editing uh, provides an extra mechanical force to reduce the reactor thickness, the reactor wall thickness, sorry, and it uh, pr pr provide a tight and precise path, uh, path for trace movement, as we see at the right figure, and it also provides a large uh, lighted surface area for uh, the bioreaction applications. So finally, um, the, the most wonderful point uh, is that the integration of all of these solutions support each other and doesn't interact with each other. It will never interact. Uh, this video shows the, the, the whole idea from the, the movable sieve trays that fixed on the, on the belt conveyor, on the, on the rotating pulleys right here, mounted uh, in the core of the reactor and the, the whole structure will going to be operating uh, as a photobioreactor right here. So this is the final structure of the reactor. We could see it right here. And then let's move to see now the, the, the pre-recorded video of the reactor. At the right side, we could see the reactor operating and we could easily see the, the trays moving downwards. And at the left top video, we could see the trays uh, rotating at the top uh, the top end of the belt conveyor. And at the left side, uh, at the bottom left side video, we could see the, uh, the trays moving upwards, uh, utilizing the, the bouncy force of the gas bubbles. So moving to the results, first, uh, the result of the moving sieve trays, this, this proposal 
uh, we could see that it provide a very homogeneous agitation. This is the 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 uh, the velocity profiles of the liquid, and it shows uh, an average. Uh, this is an average speed. You know, this is an average velocity of the uh, of the trays, and it shows 0.14 meter per second uh, of of linear agitation. Uh, this is the pressure difference above and beneath each tray, and it also shows a very wonderful homogeneous uh, pressure difference uh, above and beneath each tray. And this is the movable sieve tray, and this at the left side figure, we could see the uh, the foam layer that accumulates inside each layer, which increases the mass transfer area between the gas and liquid. The second result is regarding the air reservoirs, and we could easily see this this accumulated gas inside each tray, which which generate the bouncy force to to rotate the the belt conveyor. This is the belt conveyor result, um, or let's say the the energy distribution, the energy balance inside the uh, the belt conveyor, or let's say on the belt conveyor, and we could see the the bouncy force at the uh, at the left side top moving upward arrow. This bouncy force overcome all the other forces of friction or the the little bearing friction forces uh on the uh, or in the the bearing sorry the pulleys sorry next the z shape uh the result of of uh, designing the reactor in a z shape as we could see at the right figure uh the, without the z shape editing or the this improvement in the design while the trays are moving at the top of the of the of the pulley it's it tried to expand the the long wall towards the reactor and thus it might uh stuck and never rotate so this z shape design was essential uh in 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 uh, operating this reactor in a good and uh smooth way uh, at the left figures, it shows that the difference before and after uh, sh shaping this reactor in a Z shape, and it, it shows how it uh, decreases the required uh, thickness for the reactor. Uh, during the, the continuous operation, the, the reactor shows a wonderful result uh, with one half of consumed power as compared with um conventional bioreactors while operating as a green bioreactor um the the most significant the most significant results was this reactor this novel reactor needs only 0.14 of uh, uh gas volume per uh volume of liquid per minute that consumes only 0.28 watts per liter uh of liquid and it's very quite small quantity as compared with previous designs uh, to provide 0.14 meter per second of average linear velocity uh, of liquid linear velocity uh, for agitation and this also provides a gas uh, liquid mass transfer area of 9.6 meters square per uh, cubic meter of liquid and sorry <clears throat> the this also uh, it's also worth to mention that this project uh, took around three years to reach this final optimization and uh, conclusion. Uh, uh, as well, we would like to share with you uh, our registered patent at the United Kingdom Intellectual Property Office. And that's it. For any questions, uh, uh, you can email us on the email shown on the screen or type it to Mr. Stalker. Uh, our faithful acknowledgments to everyone uh, who supported this work. Thank you all for listening and hope to see you soon in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll pause for Q&A and if you have a question, please type it into the questions box on GoToWebinar. Whilst I give you a moment on that, don't forget there are still plenty more ICME Global Awards webinars to come uh, next week. 
Uh, they're all free to attend and open to all. If you'd like to find out more, please visit icomeorg forward slash global awards. Okay, we don't appear to have any questions, so thank you very much. We're going to move on to our yeah. next uh, finalists uh, and representing the joint entry from Biocatalysts and UCL, please welcome Davy Rowan and Andrea Rayat. Hello, thank you for the introduction. Um, Andrea, I believe she'll be here to take questions at the end, but you're stuck with me for now. Um, my name is Davy Rowan. I have a MEng in chemical engineering from the University of Edinburgh. I made a transition to biochemical engineering via an MSc in industrial biotechnology at the University of Strathclyde. As of last month, I'm a process improvement scientist at Biocatalyst Limited. But today I'm here to talk to you about a project I worked on as a knowledge transfer partnership associate for the past two years. This was a collaboration between Biocatalyst based in Wales and University College London's Biochemical Engineering Department. And the project was Ultra Scale Down Accelerates Industrial Enzyme Manufacture. To give you a little bit of context on Biocatalyst, we are a global specialty enzyme company and part of the Brain Group. We offer off-the-shelf enzymes for food and related industries, as well as providing an award-winning service package that provides customized enzyme discovery, development, and manufacturing service. We partner with companies across a broad spectrum of markets, taking novel enzyme ideas from concept to, to routine manufacture. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead here. Uh, in under 18 months, um, we help them gain a competitive advantage with their new product development with this accelerated timeline. Before the KCP project began, Biocatalyst had already embarked on a £6 million investment in enzyme manufacturing, an ambitious expansion which is now being commissioned. Just to give you an idea of the scale, the upper walkway you can see is about four and a half metres high. From the beginning, Biocatalyst determined that advanced biochemical engineering expertise was, crit uh, was critical to the future success of this project. To develop this expertise, University College London was an ideal partner based on its cutting edge research on bioprocessing. Hence, this KCP was proposed. UCL's innovative ultra scale down equipment and methodology in particular was identified as important to integrate. The purpose of ultra scale down is to enhance understanding and to give improved prediction of process scale with small amounts of material. This means more economical R&D, fewer failures and greater speed to production, which is crucial in our industry to retain competitive edge. An example of ultra scale down methodology uh, excuse me, methodology and device form is the compass shear device you can see here. It has the ability to mimic the forces that bioprocess materials like enzymes and culture broth are exposed to in large scale operations using only milliliters of material. You can see the red region in the diagram shows high shear region. So we combined ultra scale down devices to create our ultra scale down platform to mimic downstream processing steps shown here. Excuse me. In the next few slides, I'll take you through how we worked on flocculation, then centrifugation, and onwards. I'd like to highlight one particular project in which we piloted this platform. With a partner looking for an advantage in the food industry, we'd identified a potentially valuable chemical in a side stream that is a dietary supplement found in fish oil. Using our Metextra technology, our, uh, our metagenomics platform, we were able to identify an enzyme that degrades the chemical responsible for the fishy odor, allowing our partner to make supplement that doesn't smell like fish, which is a bonus. You can see our, my supervisor there, Andrea Riat, boarding the shear device of material, and the benchtop centrifuge used to clarify the 1.5 mil samples of cell broth. At Biocatalyst, we have a 3-litre continuous centrifuge and just installed one 22 times larger. So you can see it behind me in this photo. The centrifuge bowl weighs about a tonne and rotates at 4,500 RPM. 
The trouble is the feed has to be accelerated in fractions of a second to very high speeds, and the process stress on the material is enormous, and every week we are faced with new biological material to separate in the machine. I can use the compass shear device with about 20 mils of culture broth to predict if this new material will be harmed, and if so, how to protect it. So the KTP began around alpha scale down methodology, but as these things often do, it developed to become much more. During the course of the project, biocatalyst reps, including one of our principal scientists, ended up lecturing at UCL. While well, UCL academics provided expert insight into processing issues across scale. They also organized rapid prototyping through 3D printing. You can see the CAD drawing here of a scaled down impeller as an example. And we use that to create our ultra scale down flock vessel, you can see there, which is about 2,000 times larger, uh, sorry, 2,000 times smaller than the uh, vessel you can see there, but it's geometrically similar. Primary recovery is often the most challenging step for the recovery of intracellular enzymes and was in this instance. However, the industrial and academic network available to me through the Knowledge Transfer Partnership helped us to rapidly explore flocculation conditions. Combining se uh, selective flocculation work with the compass shear device and scale-up principles, we were able to create these operating windows. You can see from uh, top left to right, the yield decreases as we scale up. Now that's due to high solids content. We can mitigate this by keeping the modulating agent high, which keeps our uh, enzyme in solution, and diluting so the centrifuge operates more effectively. You can see from bottom left to um, bottom right with um, increased shear, the centrate solids increases, which means we have a smaller window under 100, which is approximately where we want to be. And with dilution, there is not too much of an effect, which is good news for us. And hence, we're looking to be operating in the upper right-hand regions of the charts on the far right for high recovery and uh, simple processing. You can see on the left where we began with 40 to 50% recovery for each product. Uh, product and how we were able to improve through selecting the best conditions from the ultra scale down predictions I just showed you to about 80%. This allowed us to greatly enhance the recovery of the enzyme I just mentioned and another product in development. Note that here I'm showing protein recovery and approximately 20% of that is not our enzyme of interest. After establishing this technology, an order from a customer came in um, for 30 kilograms of this enzyme. So instead of producing three kilograms of product from one 500 litre fermentation, we're able to produce five kilograms with the, safe, with the same overall processing time. So as you can see here, instead of the 10 processes and 80 days it would have taken to complete, we were able to fulfill the order in six processes in 48 days. This saved us 32 days um, for other produ uh, production opportunities and allowed us to ship the material to the customer earlier than we originally planned. Bringing in these new engineering skills has also helped us to enhance product, uh, our product discovery by speeding transition from test tubes to a high performing production process. We've been able to use the increased capacity to further develop many products, including one of our strategic products, MGL, that is methionine gamma live which helps to produce sulfurous notes and cheese, which apparently makes the cheese more appealing. Initial scale-up work shows a good response with these high recovery techniques for this enzyme. As a collaboration, we are currently preparing a publication on some of this material, which we hope to be able to share with you all shortly to further to celebrate the success of this project. Here at Biocatalyst, we are continuing to marry our expert cell biology skills with improved process design to create new product opportunities with high value to our customers. The Knowledge Transfer Partnership Scheme is run by Innovate UK and was supported by the Welsh Government, both of whom I'd like to take the opportunity to thank. I'd also like to thank all parties again for their contribution, particularly my UCL supervisors, Mike Hoare and Andrea Rea 
and my manager, Maeve O'Neill, uh, from Biocatalysts. Thanks to the IKME for this opportunity, and uh, thank you all for listening. Okay, thank you very much, Davy. So once again, it's time for questions. So if you'd like to ask a question, please type it into the questions box on the GoToWebinar portal. I will we'll give you a moment on that. Don't forget the winner of this award will automatically qualify as a finalist for our top prize, the Outstanding Achievement in Chemical and Process Engineering Award. Why not join us for that webinar too? Next Thursday, visit icme.org forward slash global awards for more details. Okay, we're going to move on. We don't appear to have any questions. So thank you very much, Davy. Our next thank finalist you. represents Fujifilm Diocent Biotechnologies. Please welcome Charles Heiss. Hello, good morning, and uh, hello to everybody around the world. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we are delighted to have Symphonex shortlisted um, for the 2020 Biochemical uh, Engineering Awards. And we're excited to share our innovation project, which has and will change the way that we make medicines. But Fujifilm Diocent Biotechnologies uh, is a contract manufacturer. So we focus on making medicines for clinical trials and for launch products. The project was started because the process for purifying these proteins um, or biological medicines seemed unnecessarily difficult at production scale. Based on the team's experiences, we saw an opportunity to simplify operations, remove bottlenecks and adopt new strategies for next generation batch and continuous medicine manufacture. We wanted a flexible, standardized and simple to use system to make manufacturing easier and faster. So our solution, uh, Symphonex is one machine that can carry out all of the different operations employed for manufacturing scale protein purification. By connecting the rig to a specific unit operation, you can then define the functionality of that system. So everything is standardized and yet multifunctional. The single flow path design is GMP compliant and fully disposable to prevent cross contamination but designed to be used for a production campaign to reduce plastic waste. It incorporates point of use buffer mixing over the full range of its operating flow rates to support both continuous and batch manufacturing modes. This provides the step change required for smaller factories and higher production capabilities. We've built the software with a collaborative, uh, sorry, we built our software with um, the collective operational knowledge uh, and the operator in mind. Uh, the idea is to enable them to work effectively by supporting them through the long hours of night shifts with automated data collection, control and intra-rig communication. At the same time, we've ensured that the system is fully compliant with regulatory and data integrity requirements. Now, the project was conceptualized four years ago and was rapidly developed to achieve the critical milestone of GMP qualification status in October last year for use in the production of material for human clinical trials. Since then, we've continued to develop the project and deployed Symphonex internationally. What's most exciting for us is that we're currently using Symphonex in our 500 litre non-GMP proof of concept continuous manufacturing facility. This will then inform the design and operation of, of our future continuous GMP facilities that will allow the rapid manufacture of large quantities of biological medicines in response to pandemics such as COVID-19. Oh, what's going on there? Why are we not on this one anymore? Um, alongside the deployment of Symphonex, we're also working on systems that will support larger scale and smaller scale operations to address other market needs. So before I close out this presentation and acknowledge the team, uh, we have a short video that I help hopes outlines our thought processes and explains why Symphonex uh, is the future of biopharmaceutical manufacturing. So uh, 
I'm just going to load up the video for you. Bioprocess manufacturing is a complex process. The downstream process alone requires a wide range of different pieces of equipment and unit operations. With multiple vendors, equipment communication is incompatible. Limiting automation and increasing service, maintenance, training, and qualification costs. Operating range is limiting, so different equipment is required as you scale the process to meet future production demands. Eventually, you'll run out of precious clean room space. So we thought, what if we could design a new disruptive bioprocess equipment capable of running multiple unit operations with one single use flow path design? Could we design a technology that allowed the same piece of equipment to run across a broad range of scales, accelerating the drug discovery journey to commercialization simplifying the way material demand and scale-up is achieved. What if it could run as a standalone piece or connected to multiple identical rigs, enabling process connectivity, integration, and automation? One equipment design for both traditional and continuous biomanufacturing. What if it could even handle the buffer management bottleneck with integrated inline buffer dilution? Could we change the way we make medicines? Yes, we could. And here it is, Symphonex. We learned from current limitations in commercial equipment, limited operational flow rates, single-use sensor designs, and flow path chemical compatibility. And we designed a technology solution suitable for our current and future needs. We changed the philosophy behind equipment design from complex engineering solutions to simple but highly functional elegance. By simplifying training, documentation, supply chain, maintenance, and operations, we have changed the way we make medicines. Symphonex, the future today, advancing tomorrow's medicines. So I'd like to thank the team for their energy, belief, dedication, skills and knowledge. Symphonex would not have gone from the drawing board to the GMP qualified via process rig within three years without them. Furthermore, it is now a credible solution in addressing the current global COVID-19 manufacturing challenges. I want to thank the IKME for hosting this session and recognising the impact this technology will have on the manufacture of future medicines and finally, thank you so much for listening and we look forward to your questions. Okay, thank you very much, Charles. So once again, we'll pause for questions. If you do have one, please type it into the questions box. And I'll give you a moment on that. If you've been suitably inspired by what you've seen so far today to submit your own entry to next year's ICME Global Awards, keep an eye on our website for entry information. We typically open for entries at the start of March every year. So head over to icome.org forward slash global awards after the webinar. Okay, we don't appear to have any questions, so we're going to move on to our next presenter. Thank you very much, Charles. I'd like to welcome from ProClean Technologies, Sivaramakrishna Pillay. Good morning and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, greetings from ProClean here. Because it stopped, it moved. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether you're able to see my screen. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, here we go. First of all, uh, oops. Oh. Going to the end of the slideshow. Okay. 
So ProClean is a startup based in uh, uh, India here in Chennai. Um, we are a um, um, company involved in uh, uh, making specialty biochemicals using a unique uh, fermentation process. We replace typically uh, surfactants in many industries. Our goal is to uh, help our consumers save natural resources and reduce pollution uh, while doing all this also save costs. Uh, so we have a unique uh, process which we have developed, which is able to uh, make these products at uh, costs wherein we are able to compete with the chemical equivalents and solve problems for the customers. So that is our unique uh, capability. Um, to explain that uh, a little bit, Typically, uh, fermentation-based uh, biochemical production involves using a single species of microorganism, um, which is selected for uh, its efficiency in producing a particular compound. Then it is uh, subjected to the fermentation process in a bioreactor under temperature controlled and aseptic conditions. Post-fermentation, there is a downstream processing step which um, which is required to remove all the unwanted impurities and uh, then the compound of interest is isolated and subsequently it is formulated with additives to make the end use product so this is a typical process in a in a fermentation system and uh, literature shows and from my experience also i know that uh, significant part of the production cost is actually in the downstream processing steps where uh, you know various uh, techniques are used for purifying the compound also the downstream processing step uh, most of the times results in significant uh, effluent uh, release uh, because the unwanted materials are removed and uh, you know put into the effluent as against that uh, the process we have developed is uh, very uh, unique in the sense, uh, number one, we use a consortium of microorganisms instead of uh, working with a single species. These are all naturally occurring, non-genetically modified microorganisms. Uh, we um, carry out the fermentation in uh, very low cost uh, fermenters, which have been locally produced. Uh, it does not have any temperature control. In a city like Chennai, where the temperatures uh, through the year vary somewhere between uh, 20 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius, we are able to do the fermentation at the ambient temperature, which means we have eliminated completely heating or cooling of the fermenters. The process is also doesn't require aseptic conditions, although clean conditions are generally maintained, there is no aseptic condition. And the fermentation therefore happens with hardly any consumption of energy. At the end of the fermentation, uh, the uh, broth actually becomes the end use product and therefore we are not actually carrying out any downstream steps. The only thing which is wasted is to, the sediment at the bottom of the fermenter which is hardly you know two percent of the total volume. So the, the, the entire process is uh, low cost. The capital cost of the facility is a fraction of a typical fermentation uh, system. And uh, there is hardly any effluent released, either gaseous or liquid effluent, hardly any effluent release. So this is the unique uh, feature of our product, uh, our process. So the product which comes out, uh, because it's uh, through a fermentation system using uh, readily available uh, plant-based uh, raw materials, it is uh, totally biodegradable, readily biodegradable has been tested and uh, third party certified uh, using OECD protocols. We, the the uh, chemical auxiliaries or chemical surfactants which we replace, typically we are able to produce better results than what we replace. Because of the low cost manufacturing, which I just explained, we are cost competitive. And as I mentioned, there is no effluent release. Therefore, the manufacturing is also green. And uh, there are no hazardous, uh, you know, effluents released or hazardous compounds used in the manufacturing system. Overall, uh, there is high compatibility of the products with uh, whatever the customer may be using.
So essentially a very circular kind of approach compared to a typical uh, situation where surfactants are normally produced from uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, uh, raw materials. At every step of the uh, production in a typical surfactant manufacturer, you will see starting from crude extraction to refining to the fractionation to the uh, formulation of the product to usage of the product uh, there is a uh, pollution footprint created in all these situations. Significant consumption of energy as compared to that in, in what we are doing, uh, there is uh, uh, hardly any uh, influent or energy consumption. And at the end of the process, when the customer uses the uh, formulation, it is since it is totally biodegradable, uh, there are no impact also in the uh, you know, the, there is no release of any effluent by the customer also. So green manufacturing as well as in the process of uh, using the product also, there is a, a circular approach. So summarizing the uh, features of our unique uh, production process, uh, number one, extremely low energy since the manufacturing happens at ambient temperature. Hardly any waste generation as I mentioned uh, a little while ago. In the manufacturing process, we don't release uh, any significant liquid effluent and there is no gaseous effluent. The fermenters are all uh, very low cost, uh, costs a fraction of a typical bioreactor. The process is uh, extremely safe for the workers who work in our facility. And then there is no downstream processing required and therefore there is no pollution or, uh, and also saving in cost. Uh, the uh, entire organization is uh, third party certified from many sources, including ISO. Uh, for the product usage, uh, we have certification from Ecotex, from Global Organic Textile Standard. We are reach compliant and we are listed uh, third level in ZDHC Gateway. Uh, the case study which we presented in our entry for uh, the ICAMI award was. Uh, usage in the pulp and paper industry. Uh, we have developed uh, an additive uh, formulation which is dosed uh, in the uh, bleaching stage of the pulp, uh, essentially to reduce the use of bleach chemicals. This product works uh, in two particular ways. One is it chelates metal ions that interfere with the action of the bleach chemicals. Uh, typically, biosurfactants are known to do this and we are able to do this very, very do this very efficiently. The metal ion contamination comes both from the raw material itself as well as during the process in the water and also in the equipment. Second action is that uh, because of the unique uh, consortium of biochemicals present in the formulation, it facilitates the penetration of bleach chemicals into the fiber and therefore lesser quantity of bleach chemicals are required. Use of the product uh, results in, this has already been tested and proved as, as well as uh, there are multiple paper mills, pulp mills using the product in India right now and achieving these results. Number one, in a recycled pulp situation, it improves the de-inking of the uh, pulp. Uh, secondly, in a, in a situation of bleaching, whether it is virgin pulp or recycled pulp, the usage of chlorine dioxide, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide Go, can go down up to 40 percent and therefore saves cost for the customer. Better quality of the pulp due to reduction of harsh chemicals. You can imagine that uh, if the quantity of uh, caustic and chlorine dioxide is reduced in achieving the same brightness level, I will show you some results shortly. Obviously, if uh, these harsh chemicals are reduced, the quality of the pulp improves and therefore the strength of the fiber is better. Uh, since the usage of uh, uh, chemicals like bleach and chlorine dioxide and caustic is reduced, scaling comes down in the equipment significantly. And uh, the product works uh, pretty well in almost all bleach chemicals, uh, whether it is chlorine, chlorine dioxide, sodium hydroxide, peroxide, and also uh, multiple forms of uh, the source of pulp, uh, whether it is from virgin pulp, Pulp, recycled pulp, hardwood pulp, softwood pulp, or from agriculture waste. I'll show you uh, two slides on the results. Uh, this is a, a bleaching uh, of uh, hardwood pulp, which has been done using our product at 100 grams uh, per ton of pulp. This column 
shows the results when it is treated with uh, our product. And this is the control. And uh, going down the results summarized here. Oops. Uh, you can see that 100 grams per ton of pulp uh, used in uh, D0, which is the chlorine dioxide bleaching, and EOP, which is a caustic bleaching stage, saved chlorine dioxide 1 kg per ton, hydrogen peroxide 1 kg per ton, and sodium hydroxide 1 kg per ton to achieve more or less the same brightness 81.7 versus 81.6, 87.1 versus 86.8. So typically, uh, we are able to significantly reduce the bleach chemicals and deliver the same amount of brightness which the customer requires. Uh, if you look at the quality of the pulp, uh, all the parameters like tensile strength, burst index, tear index, and double fold, we are showing improvements compared to control. While these may seem uh, like small improvements, they are significant for the paper mill because the yield and the quality of the pulp increases significantly. So thank you very much. That is the presentation from us. And on behalf of the entire ProClean team, I would like to thank uh, IKME for giving us this opportunity. It is an honor to have been uh, shortlisted as a finalist. And thank you for the opportunity for this presentation. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. So once again, we will pause for Q&A. Uh, if you have a question, please type it into the questions box now. Okay, we don't seem to have any questions coming in, so we will move on. Thank you very much. Our next finalist represents the University of Malaya. You may have already seen him pop up once or twice on screen already, but please welcome now Ling Tao Chan. And you will need to unmute your microphone. Can you see my slide now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And we can hear you now. Okay. So, good. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Today, I just like to share my research topic about the sustainable microbial bacteria symbiosis for future biochemicals. So we have working on, on this project in here, we try to develop a sustainable and green technology which using the microbial and bacteria for synthesis of chemicals for future biochemicals applications. And as you know that these two microorganisms are easily to culture are uh, widely available in the world. So let us go through what is microalgae bacteria symbiosis. This symbiosis is a close relationship in where some species get benefit and another one may be get benefit or negative relationships. So this diagram explain you further. You can see here. So in our project, we focus on bacteria and microalgae. So as you can see here, so if they have two reactions between these two microorganisms, we will have new cells is developed. So you can see from the diagrams, so some of these new cells can be used for biochemical applications as a reliable, cheap, and sustainable so, for our study, we found that the microalgae and bacteria interactions has attributed or contributed to some benefit of this, for example, harvesting. So, bacteria helps in stimulating microalgae bioflocculations. So, this is useful for downstream processing. For cell destruction as well, 
LGC dar microorganisms at micro LG cell lysis efficiency. Again, this increased the downstream efficiency um, uh, productivity. And it also can have some energy produced. And then this can help the environment by reducing the gas. So, microalgae bacterial interactions have been used for wastewater treatments, as we, we have discussed just now, it contribute any contributions. So, here, while how we try to apply this simple and cheap technology in wastewater treatment, bioremediation, and agriculture. So, for example, for wastewater treatment, algae bacteria since system have better exchange of oxygen and CO2 and bioremediations, algae bacteria community can detoxify and assimilate matters from metal rich environment. So in aquaculture, so they have simulate probing and inhibitory compound productions and these can increase the sustainability of aquaculture. So this is example of the applications we have developed. So, these are the main focus of biochemical of the future. So, as you can see, the simple technology uh, by the symbiosis of bacteria and the microalgae, they have produced a lot of applications, for example, for commercializations, nutrition and health products, cosmetic and pigments, microalgae, recombinant proteins, and several isotopes biochemicals. And they also can use for drug screening, for antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-cancer. Also, the biochemicals can be used for industry, like agriculture, animal feed, biofertilizer, pharmaceutical. Also, for five chemicals that produce carotenoid, fatty acids, and biocompounds. All these biochemicals are cheap and can be produced sustainably, and this is they contribute a lot of advantages, especially to the developing country, for example, Malaysia and India and other developing countries, which they use very simple and cheap technology. So these are more potential we can explore for this micro algae bacteria symbiosis. So we have positive algae bacteria interactions they can improve photohormone productions, morphogenesis of microalgae, specific antibiotic activity. So they also have capable to assimilate waste source and convert them in the better or chemicals. And then this contribute to a lot of environmental benefits such as biosecretion of CO2, removal of organic pollutants and core processing of wastewater, especially these uh, for the developing country, we need a reliable and cheaper technology to contribute to this benefit. So this are uh, very good potential for this microalgae production. So I think that's all. Thank you for everyone for attending for my dinner. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So once again, we'll take a pause for just a moment. If you have any questions, please type them into the questions box. And while I give you a moment on that, now is a good time to thank our volunteer judging panel led by head judge Keith Batchelor. The judges work tirelessly to review and score every entry. You can find out more about the judging panel and its work on the ICME Global Awards web pages. Okay, we don't have any questions, so thank you very much. We're going to move on to our final presentation representing the University of Waikato. It's Aidan Berenjan. Okay, so um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Awesome. Uh, unfortunately, my webcam is faulty. A uh, whole night I was trying to fix it, but unfortunately, it's not working. So, as soon as you see the slides, would be okay. At least uh, it's working. 
um, sh shall I carry on? Yes, please, yes. Awesome. Okay, so um, thanks for, for the opportunity for, for today's presentation. I also would like to take the opportunity and thank the iChemy Global Award judges in seeing some merit in my research work to be among the uh, finalists. Um, I also would like to congratulate all my fellow finalists. I've really enjoyed their presentations and I'm sure um, we are all so excited to know who would be the winner in this really tough category. So I'm sure everyone just want to want uh, me to finish my presentation so we can figure out who would be the winner for tonight. So let me get started and quickly wrap up my presentation. Um, my nomination is about the biosynthesis and recovery of vitamin K, uh, more specifically menalquin 7 type of vitamin K. So uh, let me give some um, uh, insights before I go through details. Uh, cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis are among the major health issues worldwide. Cardiovascular disease alone occurs for more than 17 million deaths per year, and its management, um, it might be interesting to know, has a worldwide cost of $1.1 trillion. On the other side, osteoporosis is also um, among the main reasons uh, for broken, among, broken bone among elderly. And it might be again interesting to know one in two women and one in three men sustain osteoporotic fractures, uh, which is estimated to have a cost of $131 billion per year. So obviously there is a need to prevent the occurrence of these health complications. The good news is that a form of vitamin K known as menalquinone 7 or MK7 has been shown to be able to address both these highest complications by keeping calcium out of arteries and depositing it into the bone matrix. Um, well, this is a very good news, but um, why uh, MK7 is not readily available? And probably, um, I imagine uh, you haven't even heard its name. So the answer is very simple. Um, a typical fermentation process suffers from a low product yield high number of operations and the use of toxic or flammable solvents in the downstream steps. So these all together result in high capital and operation costs as well as a generation of large number of organic wastes um, and consequently the final product price borne on the consumers. It might be interesting to know that the current price for menalquinone 7 is something around $500,000 per kilogram of the product pure, um, which is obviously not uh, practical from the consumer's perspective. At the moment, uh, MK7 can be produced through the fermentation of the bacteria strain Bacillus natto, but at very low concentrations, around 15 milligrams per liter, um, when the production involves more than 20 different unit operations. So let's um, share some of breakthroughs um, with you. So is there a way to make this product reach the market at an affordable price um, and in a more sustainable way uh, to, to, make the, to make the MK7 accessible to a wide range of consumers? For more than 11 years, I've been working on developing a new bioprocess protocol to increase the MK7 yield and also eliminate or combine several unit operations together to make the process smaller, more efficient, and environmental friendly, which I call it process intensification. So a field of research which helped me a lot to achieve the aims um, of my um, research and re-engineering the existing bioprocess protocols was the synthesis of magnetic um, ion nanoparticles, uh, especially naked amino acid and aptis coated ones. These nanoparticles, due to their magnetic properties attached to cell membranes, um, for our case, bacterial membranes, and as you can see in the figure, uh, which is from the SEM on the uh, right-hand side, corner right-hand side, um, um, without showing any toxicity or harmful effects on microbial cells. Actually, from our research, we found the interaction of these nanoparticles with bacteria cell have shown to significantly increase the production of the MK7. 
um, the, the magnetic properties of um, these um, nanoparticles and they use in the bioprocess helps us to design a process where we can recycle the bacteria to the fermentation media by using magnetic field and run the process in several batches, uh, which obviously increases the target product yield and reduces the fermentation cost and um, uh, eliminates the need of centrifugation and filtration unit operations in the process. It also gives us the opportunity to to run the process in a continuous manner. Obviously, this is the case for primary metabolites, um, but it gives us the possibility to run it in the continuous way by holding the cells in the magnetic field and um, we can effectively recover the culture media while enhancing the MK7 production yield. From, from this research that I've just explained, we managed to increase the yield of the MK7 from 15 milligrams per liter to 140 milligrams per liter. So it's pretty much um, nine to tenfold increase in the concentration, which is a very important uh, achievement. So increasing the monoquinone 7 separation efficiency um, while decreasing the byproduct formation, capital and operation costs and energy consumptions, um, obviously were the overall and initial objectives of um, this research. Um, having this in mind, I also began to think about possible intensifying equipment design to enhance product yield, as well as selectively extract the MK7 from the fermentation media. So um, I, I, I move on to, to the next step of this research, um, where we managed to intensify the uh, extraction of the minoquinone 7. So typically MK7 is extracted from the fermentation media by using organic solvents, mainly a mixture of hexane and propanol. Um, I've developed a sub system that uses soybean oil as the extracting agent during the fermentation, which results in the formation of several small size bubbles of oil phase uh, in the fermentation vessel. In fact, this extraction technique was found to be efficient for menaquin 7 extraction and recovery due to high shear force that promotes efficient contact between two phases of water and the oil. Um, um, basically, uh, and give us the good separation um, of oil from water at later stage. So the development um, the, of the in-situ oil extraction method has several advantages, including elimination of hazardous solvents, low cost, high recovery, and reduction in the number of fermentation unit operations. Uh, the intensified technology allows product enrichment, integrates the process unit operations, improves product stability, biological activity, and reduces the processing time and obviously waste generation. Uh, in addition, the enriched soybean oil can be directly used for human health supplements or fortifying food products. While the, with the help of the previous mentioned strategies, I developed an intensified process for in situ separation of menarquinin 7 and microorganisms from the bioreactor. I strongly believe that this technology results in higher MK7 expression um, for, for the uh, Bacillus natobacterial cell, um, that is the common microorganism for production of menarquinin 7, while also helps with eliminating the use of organic solvents for the extraction step. In addition, this new process, as shown in the figure here, um, made several unit operations, basically filtration, centrifugation, and liquid-liquid extraction solvent um, into a multifunctional, efficient, and environmental-friendly single bioreactor. In addition um, to um, Menarquin and seven, I believe um, applying this technology to other bioprocess protocols will create safe and sustainable extraction procedures for a wide range of biomolecules, while helping in significant reduction in processing time, capital, cost, and operation cost by merging several unit operations into more selective and smaller and intensified unit operations. 
So finally, I would like to thank you all for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions and I'm sure we are all so excited to hear the winner for tonight's category. Okay, thank you very much and thank you because I appreciate it's been a very late night for you being with us uh, this evening for you. So once again, for the final time, we'll pause for questions. If you have a question, please type it into the questions box. Okay, once again, I don't think we have any questions, so we're going to move on. So first of all, let me say thank you to all of our presenters for giving up their time today. I'm sure you'll agree, six very interesting, very different presentations, but it's time to announce the winner. So let me start with our highly commended entries, and they are from the University of Waikato and ProClean Technologies. So well done to everybody associated with those entries. But now I'd like to hand back to Claire to announce the winner. Congratulations to all of you, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased to announce that the winner of the iChemE 2020 Biochemical Engineering Award, sponsored by WSP, is Fujifilm. Congratulations. Well, well done. Congratulations, Fujifilm. And Charles, if we can get you back on the line, how does it feel to be an iChemE Award winner? We can't hear you, Charles. We can see you look very happy, but we can't hear you. Oh, there we go. I think I must have been uh, I was so excited. I was pressing the button too many times. Uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're absolutely thrilled. Um, uh, it looks like it's just me here, but there are about half of the team with me in this room. We're all kind of socially uh, separated um, and some of the other um, guys who unfortunately can't make it today they're, they're actually running the, the, the machines at the moment but yeah we're, we're absolutely delighted so thank you so so much for, for that um. well thank you very much and hopefully uh, when when you can you can have a proper celebration with all the team well, so we, well, well done to everyone at Fujifilm we, we, a big we, thank you to everybody uh, drink to, uh, to, to to wash down the, the success of course, non-alcoholic, of course, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank oh. you as well, of course, to our sponsor, WSP. Don't forget the iCommune Awards webinars continue to come thick and fast over the next week. All free to attend, open to all, so hopefully we'll see you at some others. But for now, it's goodbye and congratulations to Fujifilm, winner of the iCommune 2020 Biochemical Engineering Award. Brilliant, thank you very much. And obviously.